Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Wednesday, October 9th, 2019. Um, for members of the site, this is largely going to be just a recap or uh, more of a little bit of follow-up. There's a little bit to report uh, to, since the afternoon uh, market analysis. I did the intercession analysis, except we're not going to cover the gold, silver, and uh, crude oil in this one. Just stick to the broad market. So what we had today is a, uh, a near-perfect uh, back test. It's an effective back test for intents and purposes we came within seven cents of the uh, back test of uh, or the top of the gap of I'm referring to yesterday's gap on QQQ you can see there at the uh, pop-up box low a 188.15 was the low right here and uh, we hit a high of uh, 188.08 uh, so seven cents which is effectively you know in a 200 point security that's a tag and um, as as is so often the case um, you know that that coincided with a headline. I think it was, you know, some minor headline. China came out and said they lowered expectation for U.S. trade talks after the uh, the blacklist on Chinese officials. Well, well, obviously, I think you think they were gonna, you know, take that. Uh, I mean, I think that's just they, they've made it official. But obviously, the salvo was already fired yesterday and priced into the market when when the White House announced that. So really no change. That should be a non-event. But it did it did coincide perfectly, as the news often does. Coincides with the headlines there. And uh, most importantly, that's what I was looking for today, is saying we had entered the gaps earlier, so we probably backfill them. You know, we Yesterday, for the reasons cited, I didn't think we'd get that backfill. And we didn't. We were rejected. But today we started to enter the gap. And more importantly, uh, what, what was different this time around, SPY entered its gap right here as well. Uh, we have, let me turn this all these lines off for you. We had the gap from two gaps, really, that SPY traders are watching and are significant. We have yesterday's gap right there. And we did try to enter that several times yesterday with a little failed attempt. But today we, we entered it clearly with several green candles. And we started to work our way towards backfilling it. But as I've mentioned, there's also this line here, uh, the gap from last Friday right there that comes into play as well. And that's a level that uh, seems a lot of traders are watching. So SPY tried to enter that, um, that gap right here from Friday and uh, was rejected. But here's the bottom line is we filled, I, I did say earlier today, it you know, as much as, you know, against my swing short positions that I don't want to see, you know, a 1% kickback rally like we had in QQQ today, uh, I, I said it would actually be better for the bearish case um, because gaps... Uh, once entered, uh, or I'm sorry, well, yes, once entered, they are backfilled, number one. And more importantly, uh, they too, they, gaps do tend to be backfilled um, more often than not. And so in this case, if, you, if we want to make the case that the market's going lower, uh, at least we can say now with confidence that there's no unfinished business left behind. You know, all these, most of these other gaps in recent weeks were backfilled, and this one has now been backfilled. We didn't backfill SPY, uh, and maybe we go ahead and do that tomorrow. To keep it very simple, it was all kind of near-term, you know, interday stuff, but um, in the video earlier today, I added this potential uptrend line right here on QQQ. Uh, we need to watch that, uh, break of that. And probably the most important levels, uh, at the end of the day, backfill or not, rejection off the top of the gap on QQQ or not, uh, what I can say is we're still in the middle of this range here, and we're kind of pinching up, um, and we're closer right now to the top of the uh, the downtrend line. Remember, I've talked about how uh, QQQ and SPY remain in very in near-term downtrend lines. Near term since the highs on uh, um, that's September 12th, right there. Uh, one, two, three. You know, a series of lower lows. Or I'm sorry, lower highs so far and lower lows, and that's what makes up a downtrend. So the downtrend is intact, but it, to keep it going, we have to then t undercut this low from uh, last week. When was that? Was it uh, Thursday? Uh, that low has to be undercut. And we're closer right now to this previous reaction high. You know, a break above that would start to call the... Um, uh, the downtrend into jeopardy, and it would also, more so than just a single reaction high, which really doesn't, I um, need to be very clear, it's not a black and white thing, all or none, where if you take that out, well, the downtrend's completely over. You know, if you look at it th just from a simple price perspective and you draw lines, you know, you still have 
you could have a downtrend line coming off that high there. Heck, you could have one coming off like this, go all the way up here, and still be in a downtrend. So I don't want to make too much into that that uh, series of higher or lower highs and lower lows. But more uh, importantly, we have that big 189.40 level, which was the top of the trading range and back in August on QQQ uh, right there. It was broken out and back tested successfully. We did go through it a few times, but uh, there's been uh, subsequent reactions off that level, including that most recent reaction. So if we take that out, we also have a very big and significant level right here, about 190.53. And as I said, I believe in yesterday's video and certainly in today's earlier video, anything really above here, that 190.50 level, we, other than just a brief marginal pop, that's where uh, it, it certainly turns near-term bullish. Uh, it would have undone a lot of this. It would have called that downtrend into question and um, taken out some significant resistance because as of now, there is just a lot of potential resistance overhead for QQQ. So if, you know, the, if it can take it out, that uh, should open the door for a run at least up towards those uh, previous highs and, and maybe that marginal new high scenario where, again, the market only goes up maybe 3 4% above the previous highs, 2 3 4%, uh, and then uh, goes on to break those larger wedges and key uptrend lines and key moving averages that I've been covering on the, on the weekly charts. All right, so that's it. As of now, really not too much to take from today other than a uh, uh, just a, a counter trend bounce and a near perfect backfill of that gap. So that leaves no, one business, no unfinished business and a rejection off there, by the way. Nice rejection. NQ continued to drift down into the close. Um, we're going to get to that in one second. Uh, before we move away from that, go to SPY. And there's the the gap lines I'm talking about. Uh, you can see here the gap from Friday and yesterday's gap right there. So we entered yesterday's gap about halfway, backfilled about halfway, shot back down right into the close to the uh, really to back to the bottom of the gap there. And again, uh, you know, probably coin toss odds whether the market will go up and backfill that to not leave any unfinished business. Anything much more than uh, that is going to do a couple things which would uh, change the near-term outlook um, to more bullish. It would take out this downtrend line. This one's valid already. We have, unlike that one on QQQ, we have three distinct reactions on this trend line to help validate it. And we also have right where it would come in, if we were to take it out tomorrow, let's say, or Friday, right at that key 294 level. Numerous, numerous reactions all back here on that uh, August trading range. Big gap above it, which is even, you know, helps to validate that as a very significant level. Back test, back test failed. And when we failed, we didn't just limp on down through there. We, we you know, had a waterfall type, you know, very powerful impulsive sell off. And so we did overshoot it recently. But as I said, that's what I consider a momentum field overshoot. Either way, it's still a significant level. So to keep it very simple, uh, that's how I'm looking at the market right now is anything uh, much above that level, uh, especially that previous reaction high is cert would certainly be near term bullish. And uh, of course, you have a, you know, a minor uptrend line like I showed you on QQQ a minute ago right here to watch a little spike below. There's been just a lot of a lot of uh, technical and news driven spikes. And this is just I'm telling you, this is this is indicative. I've seen this towards other market tops where you have this just erratic kind of trading. Uh, we'll see. I, you know, again, to me, nothing's changed. You know, at best, I see marginal upside. I don't. I'm still favor that we don't do that. I still favor we go head down. I uh, like the fact that QQQ backfilled the gap today. Uh, like I said, at least uh, to me, even though the spy is more of the stock market, QQQ is more of what's driving the market. All the heavy market leading tech stocks. This market is all about tech. Make no mistake about it. Where tech goes, the market goes, and that's um, tech has a you know better than a 50% or so weighting in QQQ, and only about a 24, 22% weighting in SPY or S&P 500. So that's it. So we'll see what happens. We'll watch these levels tomorrow. Those are the near-term levels to watch. Top of the gap and 294 in that downtrend line, all right around here, and uh, 
then you have this uptrend line and of course each reaction low. Let's look at the futures real quick. Take a look at NQ. And NQ, it's at magic um, uh, 7727 levels. So you have two levels here that uh, have continued to cap this advance, or the, yeah, continue to cap the counter trend uh, kickback rally here. We have a downtrend line off the highs right there, off the highs from, that is the 19th, September 19th. That, blue downtrend line, couple reactions there. <coughs> uh, just like on QQQ and SPY, we had a failed breakout uh, last week uh, right there. Failed breakout uh, above that downtrend line. And uh, also, since then, I pointed out this 7721 level. It's just been uh, the big level to watch. It, it, you know, I was the one to watch the other night, I said, uh, in the closing market wrap and intraday analysis back here. Uh, we had a lot of reactions on that level, even all the way back here. But most most importantly, about a dozen or so candlesticks uh, touching that level right there. Breakdown gave us a sell signal, kicked back, uh, rallied right back to 1721 there, failed. Did it again today, this morning, failed. That was, you know, these are just objective pullback trades for shorts. But now it's building energy. Here's the thing. We've bounced back, and I said this in the earlier video today. Normally, when you break down below a support level, pretty pretty well watched level, you, uh, you either go break down, you keep going, or you come and back test it. And usually, once, yes, you can most certainly have multiple back tests and still go down. But it, it what happens is the more you knock on that level, um, the higher the chances get you might break out. Just like when you have a stock, and here's a, you have a support level, and it keeps pulling back and tapping on that support level. And uh, sooner or later, the more more you tag it, the uh, more likely it is to break down. And the more the more reactions you have, the better defined it is. And what does that mean? Basically, more eyes are watching it. You know, some levels might not be obvious to some people, um, it, but then the more that level is hit, it does become obvious. Like I talked about the trading ranges back in August. You know, I was picking up on those early, and I imagine by the end, uh, you know, early September when they broke out, just about everybody and their brother had noticed so you know the trading ranges on uh, the s p 500 and nasdaq 100 so this is like that in reverse you have a tap tap tapping here so i do have to caution uh, you know if you are short right now uh and we break above that level it could bring in um you know a, a, a lot of buyers right there at least you know you have some stops hit on the shorts and uh long step in However, there's still work to be done on the NASDAQ 100, just like QQQ. You have some, you know, resistance levels above. So it's not exactly smooth sailing, but uh, very near term, that would be bullish if it's anything other than, a, you know, another whipsaw, you know, breakthrough and then a reversal. Uh, you can see here towards the close today, uh, there's that, that trend, the comparable trend line I had on uh, QQQ there. This is on NQ. So we continue to drift a little after, but that's that's not a big deal. That's end of day, 4 p.m., right before the 4 p.m. bell, and right after there's all kinds of position squaring goes on for the ETFs and funds. Uh, so really, let's not read too much into that right now. Let's look at ES. ES, the S&P 500 uh, E-mini futures, they had a comparable level uh they're about 2935 and that also triggered they broke down the, it, with, along with qqq the other day and we did back test it once so far but spy has been lagging and this is also you know that's a that's a function of uh during this correction during the dips as has been the case pretty much throughout this bull market people are buying what they love this market has continued to lift with fewer and fewer stocks doing the heavy lifting it's been the big fang stocks tech stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, um, Alphabet. Those have been, uh, and that's the reason that you have uh, NQ already coming back on several tests. NQ has been stronger on the bounce, and again, it says those tech-heavy stocks, and so we got to keep an eye on those. And uh, so right now, that's it. These are levels to watch. The two probably uh, most important near-term levels are the downtrend line and that level there. That should probably come in close to, I'll have to take a look. Also remember you have the top of the gap on SPY uh, is resistance as well. So keep an eye on, on, on that whole thing, that area in there. Uh, you know, as with NQ and QQQ, 
bullish near term if we could break above it and it could have even intermediate term bullish implications we'll see we'll see how it looks if and when it happens and then otherwise uh, right now here you could draw a downtrend like or an uptrend line like this You're kind of pinching in this triangle pattern right here and so this thing is going to break one of two ways and if it breaks to the downside we still have a reaction low from here to you know say that downtrend still intact but I think if we take out these lows from right here this is you know back on the October 2nd 3rd the 2nd and 3rd that should open the door for a pretty quick move down uh, that would be my guess even I think if we take out this level here so that's again why I had a I just showed you an uptrend line right there well watch that and that forms a, a triangle pattern here I'll change that color to kind of match what I had drawn out there and we'll go there okay I haven't talked on small caps in a while they've just uh, they haven't been doing much there they are they are they're they're relatively weak lately uh, compared to large caps and of course the large caps as I say uh, determine where the stock market goes the majority of market capitalization within the entire stock market is in uh, the large caps even though there's fewer of them um, there's more large small caps but these guys don't move the needle as much and you know that's that's the story with the small caps is just they're you know they're in a bear market um, they were doing their own thing they topped way back when uh, IWM top back in let's see here uh, all the way back on uh, about late August 18 somewhere around there early September August uh, 2018 so for over a year now they topped and the fact that they've already fallen from high to low 27 percent you know you could call it a bear market, but technically, really, you shouldn't. I think it's you know I said I did say they were in a bear market, but when you look back over time, you know the one word that I described this bull market from the 2009 lows is supersize. So you have supersize corrections and supersize rallies because it's a supersize bull market. So yeah, 27% drop technically meets the criteria you know, of a bear market, meaning a drop of 20% or more. But you have you know the the primary trend is still up right now, and so just like the you know the other indexes we're watching those trend lines spy qqq i have various drawings on these trend lines but but uh, most of those are still above those now so like i said there's work to be done and that's why i'm not really spending a lot of time on the uh, weekly charts unless something big happens this week being a big up move in the next you know last two trading days we have in this week now uh, or a big down move we're not gonna probably have a lot of insight uh, on the weekly charts uh, because if you recall we closed just a hair below or almost right on those uh, December 24th uptrend lines on QQQ and XLK uh, last week so that's it let's just watch this near-term stuff to try to glean some clues as to you know are we gonna go up now and have a you know make a run back at the highs possibly or is a downtrend which is currently intact and that's probably we'll leave it here until unless proven otherwise this is a, a near-term downtrend uh, right here remains intact and um, we'll just have to see how that uh, how, how the charts evolve over the next uh, few days here kind of a broadening wedge type pattern too there a uh, descending broadening wedge all right we'll wrap it up here this has been randy finney with right side of the chart hope you enjoyed it